iOS 12, a significant upgrade from Apple. We are going to take a look at it today, but we're not going to take a look at the fluffy features. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to take a look at the security features, the safety features, the massive productivity increases that are built into it. There is no fluff today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. Now, today we're going to take a look at some of the features of iOS 12, the new release from Apple. And there are plenty of videos out that are talking about all of the cool and fun and kind of frivolous things that iOS 12 has. And it's got frivolity aplenty, I can promise you. But there's also some really significant safety and security upgrades to iOS 12, as well as some real productivity enhancements. I'm going to try and take this video today and focus on those aspects. Before we get into this, by the way, I'm using old hardware. This is an iPhone 8 Plus. Some of the features, uh, none of which I'm going to show you today, though, some of the features in iOS 12 are specifically designed for the, the newer phones, the 10s, the ones that do not have a home button. But I'm showing you this on slightly older hardware, the iPhone 8 Plus which is still, I think, a fine phone. And we're gonna start off with, uh, uh, in the security space, one feature, and I'm, I think this was in earlier, but it really came to light now, and it's something that you should pay attention to if you haven't paid attention to, and you should let your family members know about this one. It's the SOS feature that is now built in to the iPhone. If you go into your settings, you scroll down to emergency SOS, this, kind of flies under the horizon for most people. But what this does is it creates a quick key on your phone that you can use to contact emergency services or you can and also contact your family members. Now this is for real serious life-threatening emergencies, uh, a physical attack, a car accident, a, a medical emergency where you want the emergency services contacted as well as your immediate family members. And how you invoke it is that you can call with the side button where you press on the side button and hold it or press the side button five times consecutively and it then invokes this series of calls. It uses location services to let emergency services know where you are. And it also uses the health contacts, your emergency contacts that are in your health ID. You can go in there and you can tell it who you want to add as emergency contacts. So it will also contact family members. I think all family members should know about this feature built in to iOS and should have it all set up. I know that I want all my kids to have this installed on their phones as well as all my family members. In the iOS operating system, there are three swipes that we do on our phone on a regular basis. We swipe down to get into our notification center, and that has been upgraded in the new version of the iOS. We'll talk about that in the kind of productivity space. You swipe to the left, uh, sorry, swipe from the left to the right on your phone, and that gets in with something called uh, Day View, which uh, it has all of the widgets installed and is dealing with things like calendar and current things tying into your different applications that you have installed in your phone. But you also swipe up to invoke the control center. The control center has a lot of the best features that are built into iOS. And it's a customizable tool. How you customize it is you go into the settings and there you find control center. You tap on that and you can customize your controls. Now, if you scan through these controls, you can add or remove the different controls that are available on the screen when you swipe up into the control center. But there's two that I want to talk to you about. Two, three, two, three that I want to talk to you about right now. The first is, again, in the safety and security aspect. It's do not disturb while driving. You can add that to your control center. Now, I want to point out that when you add that to your control center, it's not where you actually manage the do not disturb while driving. Now, what do not disturb driving does is it basically stops any messages from getting through and disturbing you, uh, causing you to be distracted while you are driving. And what it will do is it will send a text message to whoever's trying to contact you to let them know that you're driving, but you will get the message as soon as you arrive at your destination. Now, you can turn it on in the control center, so you can manually turn it on and off just by tapping on it if you want to have manual control over it when you're driving. But you can also set it up to to automatically recognize when it's connected by Bluetooth to your car or when you're in a vehicle that is moving it. It'll use the 
the uh, location services built in that will recognize that you're moving at a speed that a car would be moving and it will turn on and off itself. And where you actually manage those are not in the control center, but in the do not disturb settings also in your settings, but you go into do not disturb, you scroll down to the bottom and you have all of the controls that you need to manage your do not disturb while driving. You can change it from manually invoked to automatically or when connected to your car Bluetooth. And that way there you will be, you will ha obviously have it invoked and you become a safer driver. Good for you, good for society. The second tool that I wanted to talk about in the control center is the magnifier. Now this one is far less dire as far as the consequences. This magnifier, I think people of my particular vintage are finding it to be incredibly valuable. It allows us to add to our control center a little magnifying glass that allows us to, you swipe up, and this, this is like the perfect tool for restaurants. It's the little magnifying glass, you turn it on, and so rather than using the phone, you can scroll up and uh, using the camera, excuse, you can magnify whatever it is you're looking. And this is so valuable reading restaurant menus, I have to tell you. And you can even turn on the light, the flash light, so that you can illuminate it for those dark spaces. How relevant is this? This picture I took on Saturday night. We were out to dinner <laughs> with our friend PJ, and she was reading the menu because she couldn't, she did, she's blind as a bat. And so, and of course, Shannon and I are such compassionate, a compassionate couple that we immediately had to document it. But you see that it is relevant. It's something that we use all the time. Now, I will take advantage of this opportunity and do a shout out to PJ. She's also my trainer. She has an awesome YouTube channel. So I'm going to put a link in below to mitigate some of the damage I did by embarrassing her and calling her out in this particular way. At any rate, the magnifier, this is one of the best tools uh, that, that, that I think that they have built into iOS. The next one that I want to talk about is pretty intriguing and it only works if you have Apple's earbuds, if you have Apple's AirPods. And if we go into the settings here, back into control, customized controls, we see that they've got this tool called hearing. Now this is, now it's not a medical grade hearing aid, but it is a hearing assist tool that will allow you to turn it on when you plug the earbuds in. Let me just drop my earbuds, put my earbuds in and connect to the phone. It's obviously something that I can't demo to you for you to understand exactly how it impacts. But when you invoke that, it then turns on something called live listen, which listens to the room around you and it will filter out the uh, kind of extra noise. It's almost like what noise canceling does with noise canceling headphones, but it will segment out voices to help you hear more accurately. So if you're having troubles hearing in a crowded situation, a crowded room, uh, you can try this tool with your earbuds, which will actually improve the clarity that you're listening to. As I said, it's not a medical grade hearing aid, but it is an assist. It is something that will assist. You know, a complete aside with all of these hearing assisting things and vision assisting things that Apple's coming out with, I wonder how long until they come up with a replacement eyeball for us. And do you think they'll call it the I, I just thought I'd ask. Now, before I leave the control center, a few ideas about using the control center more effectively. One of the things you can do is you can organize where all of the tools are in your control center. Now you can't control the very top tools. Those are pre-baked by Apple, but if you go in back into the controls, into the settings and you take a look, you can, you can organize where the bottom ones live just by clicking and sliding them up or down. For example, I like to have the flashlight right at the very bottom so it's closest to my thumb. It's there so that I can easily turn the flashlight on and off with my thumb. Now there are two other tools that I thought are kind of worth noting but not spending much time on. One is a built-in QR code scanner that you can use all the time now. If QR codes ever do get really popular, you've got them there. And this one I really like, look at that an Apple TV remote. Now I don't have an Apple TV hooked up here, but if it found an Apple TV here in the room, it would find it and it would allow you to control it from your phone. Now we've always been able to do that, but it's been a bit of a, it's been a bit of a kludge 
putting the remote on your phone. And of course, we all lose our Apple remotes on a regular basis. It has to be a massive revenue stream for Apple selling uh, lost remotes uh, or dog chewed remotes as has also happened in our house. But now with this, of course, it makes Apple TV that much better having the remote always available right there in your control center. I like that one a lot. Now, one other kind of wellness related feature that they've added to iOS 12 is the ability is something called screen time. Now we can access it in a couple of different places. I've got it over here uh, in my daytime and in my day view. <laughs> day view, I always forget what it's called. Uh, but this is an app that is pre-installed with iOS 12 that is kind of like a tool that we've shown you in the past called Rescue Time, which takes a look at what activities you're doing on the computer and reports back to you which, which of those are productivity related and how much time you spend on the screen. This is very similar. It charts all of your progress, all of the, your, your activities on your iPhone. And what it's designed to do is to help us understand just how much we're using our phone, how often we're checking it, and what we're doing on it. So this is health related, as in dealing with things like a little bit of internet addiction. Certainly we can invoke this on our children's phones so that we can uh, understand a little bit more effectively how they're using the phone as a, as a parenting tool, but as a personal tool as well, knowing exactly what tools you're using, how often you're going into them, how much time you're spending, how often you pick up your phone every hour to recognize in yourself what your habits are as far as using your smartphone. Now they've got some assisting tools here as well. You can actually set up filters that will allow you to turn off access to different tools at different times, which can also be used as a parenting tool with your children, being able to turn it on and off access uh, based on their activities or based on a calendar or schedule. So you've got some nice features built in there as far as that goes. But it's Apple now acknowledging that the phone itself, I think really is becoming a bit of an addictive tool to many of us. So that's one side of it, the kind of the health side saying just exactly how dependent are we are, are we on our smartphone uh, day to day. But also from a productivity standpoint, it's very valuable to know what you're spending time on so you can determine maybe if there's a more effective way that you can manage those particular activities. Screen time, a significant tool in iOS 12. Now, if you've used your iPhone for any period of time, you realize how frustrating it is to manage your passwords for different accounts using the iPhone. It's never been a very elegant uh, tool from that perspective, but there is a significant upgrade to how the iPhone handles passwords for websites. Now, the iPhone's always done a good job of handling security for itself. Between Touch ID, which we have on our built into our phone, or uh, face recognition, those sort of haptic and image related security features for allowing us access to different areas within our phone have been very well implemented. But gaining access to your other accounts, your web accounts has been less than optimal, at least in my opinion. Well, a significant upgrade has happened there. So let's go into our settings here and let's take a look. And if you scroll down in your settings, you go to passwords and accounts. You go into that setting and you see up at the top now there's a little key lock that says website and app passwords and autofill passwords. These are good things. In the website and app passwords, you go in and it will, the iPhone itself will store your passwords for different websites and it will even offer you cryptic passwords to upgrade them and make sure that they're nice and secure. It does a lot of what I've done in the past and shown you in the past on the desktop using a tool like LastPass or 1Password. And in fact, it will actually, if you tap on autofill passwords, it will allow you to choose to use either Apple's keychain, which is what we saw before. That actual access was Apple's keychain, which is where they store the passwords. Or in my case, I've chosen to have it use LastPass because that's where all of my passwords are stored already anyways, it now accesses LastPass. Now in the past, when we use LastPass on the iPhone, we often had to open the LastPass app, 
copy the password, and then go into the password field of whatever app we were in. No more. Take a look now at how elegantly it integrates with the keyboard. This is where it should be. I think this is one of the best features of iOS 12, is now when I go to access any account, it recognizes and respects all of the passwords I have stored in LastPass, allows me to access them right from the keyboard. Well done, Apple. At the risk of this video getting too long, I'm gonna wrap things up there. There's lots of other productivity features that I want to show you. Plus, there is a few apps and tools like the measuring app and things that just I have to show you. As well, the most important, I think, real advancement is something called shortcuts, which is a now way that we can start to program Siri to be able to do different activities for us, to do different sequences, which is got, I think, tremendous potential. But those stories are gonna take a lot longer than I wanted to put into this video today. So I'm gonna wrap things up now and we will follow on uh, very shortly with some other features on ways to use iOS 12, which is a pretty darn significant upgrade. I'm pretty happy with a lot of the different things that Apple has added here in iOS 12. Not to mention the fact that it seems to me that it runs a little bit snappier on my phone. It's, they seem to have optimized for the hardware a little bit more, so even though I have an older phone, it seems to be performing at a higher level. That's, that's, a, that's a good thing. I love reading your comments and suggestions, so please post below. I do read every single one. If you like this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends or colleagues who may find it useful. Now make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell, and if you have time, check out some of our other videos right over there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.